I'm delighted to have in the studio with us the best candidate the Liberals put forward at this election, Catherine Deves. Catherine, great to see you. How are you? I'm good, thank you, Rowan. Thank you for having me on the show. Well, you didn't win. Um, what a joke. You, uh, Australia supports 93%, your, uh, at least 80%, probably higher, of people support your uh, organisation or the idea of your organisation saving our girls' sports or our women's saving women's sports. You should have been front and centre of this campaign. It would have been a different result had, had you been. But they stifled you, they silenced you. What on earth was it like? Oh, look, my campaign was fighting a battle on a number of fronts. Uh, we were fighting in the Warringah Conference. We were fighting headquarters. Uh, we were fighting the lefty lovey press. Uh, and then we had to go out there and fight the tails. So considering where we started and where we got to, I'm incredibly proud uh, of my volunteers uh, and where, where we got to last night. Well, you were frustrated in fighting the Teals. I mean, you should have been focused fully on fighting Zali Steggall, not mm. internal battles and, and people undermining you from Matt Keane to uh, Sharma to, to these wets who seem to uh, tolerate everything except a diversity of views within their own party. Uh, that's right. So I think that this demonstrates that uh, what the factions do to a party. Uh, obviously, there's going to be a bit of a bloodletting, but uh, at a federal level, the moderates have been eviscerated mm. and the Liberal Party needs to get back to its traditional values. But they well, haven't just learned... Point, just, oh, just, James, just quickly, let's just watch Simon Birmingham. He hasn't learned the lesson. Yeah. Let's have a look. This is... The way she had framed those issues, I suspect, was not fully appreciated um, when she was selected and that clearly became a dominant feature of the campaign, throwing us off message, but more significantly than the throwing us off message is the point well, that I made very early... Well, it was reinserted periodically over the course of the campaign. And is the point I made early in the night. So do you I think, think she it's should a have been disendorsed? Um, well, it would have been far preferable if she would not been endorsed in the first place. Should she have been disendorsed? Um, in hindsight, yes. What a pompous git you are, Simon <laughs> Birmingham. I'm sorry. Hello. But hang on. So, so, yes, so, sorry, so, so, But... As a proof of concept, though, of what you are mm -hmm. talking about and this idea that your sort of values, sensible, common-sense values uh, versus these sort of moderate, left, squishy values, look around. You had a 4.7 swing against you, uh, according to the current count. North Sydney, Trent Zimmerman, 13% swing against him. Yes. yes. In McKellar, um, uh, Jason Falinski, 16.4% swing against him with Sophie Scomps. Now, to me, that says that the moderates... Nobody's buying what they're selling anymore. Yep. No. What do you think about that? Well, I think I started uh, an argument and <clears throat> with respect to this brand of fe feminism that is predicated on victimhood. We have these people prosecuting this argument about feminism and own there are only worthy victims. They get to choose who the worthy victims are. And if you go against their prevailing dogma, uh, then they will metaphorically burn you at the stake and then they'll resurrect you and then they'll burn you at the stake again. And I think with me getting out there uh, and pointing out that there are issues with this so-called modern feminism where they can't even identify what a woman is, mm. uh, I think the ordinary Australian people resonated with that and that is why I had so much support around the country and... And do, you think, and do you think that this now, because the New South Wales state government has been so dominated by people like Matt Keane and others who are essentially holding Dom Perrottet a hostage, do you think that all of this is actually going to bode poorly for them next year when they go to, to an election? Look, if there's going to be a, a reckoning at federal level, which obviously there is, I would not be surprised if it happens at the state level. But I think that the Liberal Party needs to get back to its Liberal values and maybe this has started that. Now, will you run again? Will you stay and fight? I would like to say to my detractors that when they thought I could not withstand the storm, that I am the storm. And I am not going Whoop. anywhere. We, you heard it here it. on Outsiders. Here she is, the great Catherine Deves. I still maintain, as I said right at the beginning, that if Catherine, if you'd been put front and centre of this campaign, if the Liberals had, had done what, weirdly, Dominic Perrottet and Scott Morrison seem to instinctively know, to allow you to prosecute the argument as to why girls' and women's sports are under threat and the steps mm. needed to rectify that. Had you been front and, front and centre every day on the television, we wanted you here every week on Outsiders <laughs> and the Liberals would not let you even appear on Outsiders. What does that tell you? Well, it tells me that 
you know, what I am saying is common sense, but they are afraid of the lefty lovey press. They are afraid of the Twitterati. But ordinary Australians back me in that position. They do not like having words mo like mother and breastfeeding stripped from law and policy. Australians do not like seeing sex removed from law and policy. Uh, but it seems like uh, our leaders are just afraid of the left press and the Twitterati. Now, Catherine, you introduced me to someone who's actually Rita's old school friend, weirdly, um, which is uh, Jasmine Sussex. Mm, yeah. Now, you and I spoke to her, and it's a documentary we've got coming up shortly um, on, here on Sky. We spoke to her and mm -hmm. she lost her job. She was forced out of a breastfeeding organisation where she'd been a volunteer for 17 years. Mm -hmm. And you fought, stood up and spoke very passionately about this. Uh, because she wanted to use the word mother to describe mothers. Oh, that's exactly right. This woke nonsense that's creeping its way into all our institutions and our politicians, uh, bureaucrats, the media sitting there saying there is not a problem, there's nothing to see here, that is not true. There are women who are losing their jobs, they're being dragged through disciplinary process processes, they're being threatened with litigation, people are afraid to speak up at work. This is happening. And... You personally copped just the most horrendous treatment from a lot of female journalists, I've yep, got to say. Of course. Vicious, unfair, completely unbalanced, all masquerading as news when it was really opinion. Mm -hmm. You've got an insight now into why conservative women don't put up their hand to run for, for, for office because this is what they cop. It's not just the, uh, the feral abuse from um, members of the public who may not agree with them, it's the media. Yeah, the media get to decide who the worthy victims are. Mm. Mm. Uh, this victimhood feminism, and if you don't fit into uh, their prevailing paradigm, then, as I said, they will muckrake. They will go through your life. Your children uh, will be threatened. Uh, you know, I, I'm aware of women who've had their livelihoods threatened. As we said, they've lost their jobs. Why would ordinary people stand up for common sense when that is the price that they have to pay? And Catherine, uh, you know, I won't go too much into the personal side of things, but you and I spoke a few weeks ago and, and you were clearly traumatised by the attacks that were coming your way. Mm -hmm. uh, how strong have you had to be? What effect has this had on your family? And as Rita says, can you ask other women to step forward? Well, courage lends to courage. So hopefully by standing up myself, other women will feel empowered to uh, follow in my footsteps. But of course that takes a toll. And as I've said, there were some very dark moments, but I had wonderful people around me who picked me up, who told me, encouraged me to keep going. And I couldn't back down to these bullies. If I did, they would have won. I wanted to make my daughters proud. I wanted to stand up for the people of Australia who are asking me to keep going, to please speak for me because I cannot speak for myself. And we were inundated with people supporting Catherine Deves. I certainly, I know James and Rita had the same thing, emails saying, Catherine Deves, we support her, we are behind her, we admire you for your bravery. Well done, you fought a terrific <laughs> campaign. As James has pointed out, it's a victory as far as we're concerned because all the bedwetters got smashed, but you did a lot better. You did a lot better in that seat there in Warringah. And next time, you'll be back. You'll be back in the Peter Dutton-led government, which we're going to fight for every Sunday here on Outsiders. And Catherine's going to be joining us as often as she can. Catherine Deves, thanks so much. Thank you, Outsiders. Thank you for your support. Anytime.